How much money do you need to start homesteading? This was a fantastic question that I got asked this week on the channel. We're gonna answer that for you in today's episode of Ask Homesteady, the weekly show that we do here on the channel where we take one of the questions that one of you has left on the channel and we try to answer it in the best way that we can for you. Today's question comes from Mark. Mark asks, hashtag ask homesteady, what does it take to actually do homesteading? And what kind of budget would you need to get started? So Mark's wondering like what basic things do you have to spend the money on and how much money do you need for it? And we're gonna to try to answer that question for Mark. If you would like to get a question answered on our show, leave a question in the comments section of our YouTube channel with the hashtag Ask Home Study, all one word, and we may answer your question on an upcoming episode. And I'm gonna include this on the podcast this week because I think it's such a good question. I think the podcast audience would like to listen to it too. If you're listening on the podcast, just note we are filming on site. We're not in the studio. There's gonna be some birds tweeting and chickens clucking. Hopefully you enjoy that. Otherwise, why would you be thinking about homesteading in the first place? So Mark, I really wanna approach this question with two different directions. First off, you wanna know what you actually kinda of need to get started. And I'm gonna approach that as if it were bare bones minimum, because I'm assuming your question comes from the point of view of getting started. Mark actually gave me some additional information, which I always love. If you're gonna leave a question, give me as much detail as you can. He says him and his girlfriend are chasing the idea of doing homesteading once they're done with their agricultural education. So I'm assuming that you're coming out of your agricultural education with a tight budget. You wanna know what are the things we have to get on our homestead, and then how much money can can we expect to spend on those? Uh, we're gonna approach this with a bare bones entry level, you know, what you have to spend money on. And then I'm gonna talk about how to budget for projects as you go forward, because there is a problem with this question. Get a little chilly out, it just stopped raining. The problem with Mark's question is, you know, what kind of budget do I need to get started homesteading? It depends. It really depends on what you want to do. So in the first part, we're going to talk about your bare bones, minimum things that you need to actually get started. And then we're going to talk about how to budget for the things that you actually want to do. Because I could tell you how much you need to budget to get started with a camel dairy. But my guess is you're probably not planning on starting a camel dairy, at least not right away. Maybe we'll convince you that eventually, but uh, you know that's further down the road. So the first thing Mark wants to know is what are the bare bone minimum things that you need to plan on having to start homesteading? And the answer to that is probably less than you would expect. By its strictest definition, I personally think that homesteading is really just kind of living off of the land. Having a piece of land that provides you with some of life's basic essentials. So that's food, but that's also energy. Uh, you know, we need shelter, we need water. Those are things you could be harvesting from your homestead. You can homestead with very little land and you can homestead without buying that land. So you do need access to a space, but that could be an apartment balcony. In my opinion, if you turn your apartment balcony into a place where you're growing a small maybe a uh, kitchen garden, farm fresh, <laughs> farm fresh herbs, maybe you're sprouting your nutrients. Who knows, you could even fit a small, depending on how big your balcony was, maybe you could throw a, a little teeny tiny little beehive on the balcony. I don't know, think outside of the box. So you only need a little bit of space, but honestly, if you're even looking to get started on a bigger scale, you don't even need an acre. You could do a lot of homesteading on half an acre or a quarter acre, depending on if you want to do plants or even lots of livestock. There are a lot of different livestock options where you can start on minimal land. So don't assume you need 100 acres or even 10. You could get started on a quarter acre or a half acre. You don't have to buy that land. 
We did an interview a long time ago with John Siskovich, who started a pastured poultry operation on other people's land. Uh, I'm going to play a short excerpt here uh, from a whole entire Pioneers Only episode of Homesteady. You'll find this episode uh, where I interview John Siskovich. It's called Running a Profitable Pastured Poultry Operation from Your Homestead or Farm. You will find that in the Pioneer Library. It's If you click in the Pioneer Library, you click on Pioneers, and then you click on Videos. You can search for John Siskovich. This will pop up. If you're a Pioneer, and, uh, you can watch that whole, whole interview. It's a great interview. But I'm just going to play a little excerpt here. And uh, again, give me a second here to, to get it queued up. And we're going to just listen to a short excerpt. Hit believe right there. Okay. You know, property, I don't know, this or that. How did you create a business out of that? Brush your teeth every day because you'll do a lot of smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... I knew that I wanted to be in this area of the state. Uh, it was a state I grew up in. I can talk Connecticut. It's, you know, it's my home state. I knew that I wanted to move out of where I grew up, but still be, you know, pretty local. I went on Google Maps and looked for open fields and open fields with houses near them. I printed up a one pager. One it has to be one eight and a half by eleven, and then a business card of here's my model, here's my requirements, here's how it works for you, here's how it works for me, bullet points. Cool. And that can lead back to a URL on your webpage, which we had from the bike trip, of explaining it more, doing some videos, whatever you want. Once they're hooked, they're hooked. Yeah. But that one pager is your make or break. And I would do a, very, a variety of things. I, I drove around and knocked on doors. I left those flyers in people's mailboxes. I knocked on doors if there was somebody I thought was home. Uh, I would drive around where I saw open tracts of land and say, hey, I'm a chicken farmer. All my uh, infrastructure can be mobile. Uh, I would like to operate on your grass, you know, your hay fields here. Let's have a chat. Cool. And um, you know, that took a variety, from driving around, knocking on door to door, something you're you know, familiar oh, yeah. with. Uh, <laughs> Or I went to town tax assessors and planning and zoning and spent some time in the you know city halls or whatever of the various towns around here. Once I found that tract of land, I would go to city hall, find who owned it, what their name was, and I would just awesome. you know stalk that person and find <laughs> if they didn't have a number or contact information on record. You Google anybody, you yeah. Google Austin and you know Fine. New Milford, and you'll find <laughs> something somewhere potentially. If not, you just go knock on their door. But I found ways to um, you know just contact people and say, hey, here's my story. This is what I want to do. And because I was so passionate about it, because I was so invested, and that had to have been apparent to who I was talking to, I actually fielded several offers of people wanting to, oh, you can have this field, you can have that field, and I got to choose based off of proximity and nice. lease situation where I wanted to operate the farm in the beginning. He goes into detail on how he did this. It's in one of the Pioneers episodes of the podcast. If you're a Pioneer, you can go to the Pioneer Library and download that. But basically what John did was he pitched to a lot of local landowners his plan to improve their property using chickens and movable infrastructure that would not be there permanent. And he was vetting options. There were multiple people saying, please start a farm on my property. And he was like, no, 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 yes. So if you're really driven and really creative and smart, like my buddy John from Farm Marketing Solutions, he started publishing videos again, by the way. So go say hi to Johnny. Tell him you uh, Aust sent you over there. Slam his channel today. Let's slam Johnny's channel. I like to cheer Johnny up. Anyway, uh, if you're like Johnny, you don't need to spend money on land. You can get access to land. But if you can afford some land, then that's great. I love owning the land because then all the improvements you make on the land are yours. Now, how about infrastructure? I'm sitting here in this really nice, beautiful barn. I got animals. I got mini cows and camels and bunny rabbits and chickens and dogs and all kinds of things in this barn. Do you need to start your homestead with a barn? No. Again, bare bones starting off, you know, hit the ground running. You can use things like chicken tractors to get you started. And this is going to be the John Siskovich episode. Just because Johnny is so good at getting a farm started with no money, no infrastructure, all that stuff. He's, he's an ace at that. Uh, 
Make yourself a John Siskovich chicken tractor and raise yourself some chickens. You can do egg laying chickens, you can do meat chickens. A John Siskovich chicken tractor is gonna cost you around $160 in materials and probably a couple days unless you just try to tackle it all in one day. And you're out, you're running and you can go anywhere with that chicken tractor. You can go on other people's land, you can go on your own property, and now you're started. Not into livestock, then build yourself a couple raised beds and, you know, off and running. You don't need a big fancy barn, you don't need to spend a bunch of money on a big fancy barn. Small, cheap infrastructure to get started, and that can scale to larger livestock. Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy coming from you. You want to get into it real hardcore. You want to go for things like cows. Watch Greg Judy's channel. Greg Judy is an awesome resource for pasturing large animals. He does mostly cows, but he also pastures sheep and goats and a bunch of other stuff. Greg Judy doesn't use barns. He doesn't have dry lots. He doesn't have a lot of money in infrastructure. You don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff. You don't need an ATV. You don't need a brand new pickup. You don't need a tractor. You don't need a mower, a rake, baler, all this stuff that just consumes capital that you, you could be using to buy these. Okay? That's how he grew this herd was from other people's money. He leases people's land as lifetime leases. He moves cows onto them and sheep onto them with a little bit of high tensile perimeter fencing and then some of the semi-permanent stuff in the middle of the property. He moves the animals quickly so he never needs to keep them in a barn. They have trees and things to hide under and he has some hardy animals that can you know, handle the winter where he is. So again, depending on where you are in your climate, things may be different, but you can get away with it in a lot of places. You could have animals outside and if you focus on things like meat animals, even if you have a bad winter, most of your meat animals you could put in the freezer before winter and not even worry about it. So you don't need to spend a ton of money on a barn. You don't need to spend a ton of money on land. What else really big ticket items are there? I am a big believer in spending money on good infrastructure. Good infrastructure makes a huge difference when you're homesteading. Back behind me here is a frost-free hydrant. All winter long, I can turn this on and I got water flowing all winter long. That is so much better than hauling buckets. So honestly, whatever you do, I would focus in the very beginning on spending money really on your infrastructure and things like water, fencing, uh, the really important stuff for your animal's everyday life, that's where I'd, I'd focus my budget. If you go and watch Greg Judy's videos, you will see that after he leases a farm, he puts a high tensile perimeter fence up, that way his animals can never escape, and he will run water. He'll put in a pond and then run water lines off of that pond. This infrastructure is where you get the most bang for your buck. High tensile fencing on your perimeter is way cheaper than more permanent heavy duty fencing. Wow, that was a camel sneeze and that was loud. <laughs> what was that? High tensile perimeter fencing is much more bang for your buck than like putting up, you know, a, a wooden fence around your, your little homestead area. Running water lines, you know, foot for foot is not too expensive, but is an incredibly efficient way to run a homestead. And in the beginning, the more things you do that help improve your efficiencies, the more you can do, which means the more money you can save off food you're raising for yourself, and the more money you can make as you grow, have more products and you sell those products, and now you have a better budget to spend on homesteading. So don't spend a ton of money at the beginning on the land or on big, like, you know, permanent infrastructure like the barn here. Instead, get by with small, semi-permanent, movable, cheap infrastructure, find animals that are more hardy and put them in places where they can thrive without so much heavy duty infrastructure to get yourself up and running. 
Think about doing meat animals where you can raise them. I'm talking meat chickens, meat pigs, even like lamb or goat, where you can get them in the spring, run them through spring, summer, fall, and before winter, put them in the freezer and take winters off to plan what you're gonna do next year. To get yourself off the ground and running, these are great ways to get started. Low budget, low cost, start saving some money, maybe even start making a little bit as you start to sell products, and then you can go bigger. Now let's talk about dollars and cents. What do you actually need to consider for a budget? How much money are you actually going to have to budget for certain things on your homestead? Specifically, we're gonna talk about how to put together a budget for different endeavors. But first, it's time for the Homesteady Camel Train shout out. And today's shout out is a really nice Camel Train shout out from Sarah. And she wrote a very, very nice letter to us. So Sarah says, hello, Austin Kate. I'd like to begin this email by first saying thank you from the bottom of my heart for being as amazing as you guys are. And I truly mean that. I have learned more about homesteading from your channel than I have from any other homesteading channel on YouTube. You've inspired me and motivated me beyond measure. You've helped me realize a dream that's been growing stronger and stronger inside me every single day for about five years now. The possibility of having my very own homestead someday. And I feel that someday is coming very soon, like very, very soon. <laughs> Sarah is 37 years old and she is an Air Force veteran. She served as a med tech in two tours of duty in Iraq. During the height of the Iraq war, so Sarah's been She's been in it. After she was done in the military, she went and she got her BA in biology. She says, sadly, she didn't do anything with it, but don't worry, Sarah, I think when you start homesteading, you're gonna use a lot of what you learned in biology. Sarah is currently unemployed, and she says it's due to a service-connected disability rating for PTSD and a few other health issues. So she decided to pursue an online degree for her master's in business administration. <laughs> she says she didn't know why she was doing it, but she figured why not couldn't hurt. Again, if you start homesteading, your mix of, first off, just being a like hard worker through tough stuff, being, you know, going through what you've been through, and then your biology knowledge mixed with like business administration, uh, I think it all played together nicely on the homestead. It sounds like a good, a resume for a homesteader. She says, I gotta read this because I think Sarah's um, feelings here are the way a lot of people feel. She says, I wanna become a homesteader so badly I can taste it. I know it's what I want to do, but I'm afraid. I'm a 37 year old woman who lives alone and I don't foresee that changing though I don't have a crystal ball. I wanna be smart and responsible about this dream of mine. I wanna start slow and work up to what I know I can handle on my own. I know I can do it. I know I could be so happy as a homesteader, but fear of the unknown has been paralyzing me for years now. I'm ready to take a leap of faith and jump into the homesteading world. I'm actively searching for property to begin my homesteading dream. I currently live in Northern New Jersey, but the rest of my family moved to Florida over the past few years. So now I have to move to Florida too. Not thrilled about it, but it's family, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Meh, might be good, who knows, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, I'm with you. I would not want a homestead in Florida, Sarah, but if you got family there, there's a, there's a lot to be said about having a good support circle, especially if you are gonna go out alone, which people do. We just interviewed Ariel in the podcast last week, and uh, she's out there in the mountains, just homesteading all by herself in her tiny home, so you can totally do it. Sarah has another goal. She says, uh, in addition to become, wanting to become a homesteader, she wants to be a successful YouTuber like you guys are. I admire the two of you so much. I've been subscribed to your channel for quite some time now, and I recently became an annual pioneer. And then she says, though as of tonight, I'm totally a loud and proud lifer, LOL. <laughs> I've watched you guys grow exponentially over all this time, and I'm very proud of you, truly. You deserve all your victories and successes because you have blessed so many people such as myself with invaluable information and advice on homesteading. Sarah, I'm gonna get choked up with this, this email. This is so, I'm, these kind words are really, really nice to read. Uh, please don't ever stop doing what you're doing. You're all a true joy to watch and follow along with. You're an absolute inspiration. So uh, Sarah, <laughs> she apologized. She says, I know it's not a short paragraph that you asked for. Sorry about that. 
that's okay. I'll read letters like that. They could be five pages. I'll read them all day. Uh, she says she doesn't have a homestead or business yet to talk about or a YouTube channel. Uh, so nothing to plug right now, but Sarah, here's my thing. When you start that YouTube channel, you just give me a shout back out and we'll send the audience over to check out what you're doing. We're going to help you be a successful YouTuber too. Um, it's like why we do this channel letters and, uh, stories like that. Just that's why we started doing this way back when we started it. And Sarah has been following for a long time. So we, we've been growing together, Sarah, and I want to hear about your homestead as it starts growing. So, uh, at the end of this video, we talk about our start homesteading today course. Definitely dive into that. It's going to help you get started. And especially with your worries, it's going to help you learn to build at the speed that you want to build at. So stay tuned. That's at the end of this video. We talk about that class. So now let's get back into budgeting. Uh, Sarah, don't, don't forget, look out for your special one of a kind homesteady camel train t-shirt. Uh, we're just about to sell our 80th camel train ticket as of recording this. So if you'd like to join the camel train, like Sarah, get the t-shirt, get the lifetime pioneer membership. So all our bonus content, all the homesteading discounts, everything we do for the pioneers, our live show on Monday, Sarah, join us for the live show, by the way. Um, you get all that one payment and you're done for life. And also you get your shout out. So if you'd like to join, click there to become a camel train member. And there are only about 21 spots left. We're about to sell our 80th ticket. So jump on that train while there's still time. Let's get into budgeting for the homestead. So Mark, you and your girlfriend are planning ahead. Good job. It's always good to plan, especially when it comes to things like spending money on a homestead and putting a budget together for that homestead. How much money should you have to get started? Well, like I said, depending on what you're doing, you can get out the gate pretty cheap. If you want to start a pastured poultry operation like John Siskovich, factor in around $160 in materials. For 10 bucks, you can download Johnny's ebook right now and have the plans on how to build this. We'll have a link in the description below. If you're a homesteady pioneer, you get a discount, but either way, you'll find a link in the description below for Johnny's book. And then to order your actual chickens, let's say you want to do... If you want to do, you know, 50 meat chickens, I think when you order them, they're somewhere around a buck 50 per chick. So you're looking at $75 there. You're going to be getting some other miscellaneous stuff. John shows you how to make pretty reasonably priced feeders and waterers. All in all, averaging about six pounds each. You know, if you're buying them at the supermarket, if you ask five or six bucks per pound, you know, that's a 25 or $30 chicken and you can probably profit $5 per bird. So you've made yourself 250 bucks. You've almost paid for your, your, all your infrastructure that first batch. If you do two batches, you'll actually be profiting. Now you won't probably be profiting for the time investment, but if you're doing this because it's something you want to do, it's a hobby you want to have, uh, you're learning as you go, then your time is kind of your investment, your education, and also what you're doing, enjoying your time, doing what you want to do. So to get started, there you go. There's, a, I mean, if you have 500 to $1,000, you could pretty much get started with chickens. Another great place to start would be rabbits. We got our two breeder rabbits for like $60. We put them in a stall in a barn, but you could just as easily put them in a garage. I mean, these rabbits... They don't have to be outside. They do need some sunlight, so having a window or some bright LEDs is helpful. But these two rabbits went and multiplied. We now have like 30 rabbits in there. That's tons of meat we're raising. And we are doing this so far off of, we've bought two bags of feed at $15 a bag. That investment in the rabbits, if you already have a shed or a garage or just a space you can keep them and not let them escape, you could get started with rabbits doing meat rabbits for like $200 and change. And they're just, they multiply like crazy. They're very self-sufficient. Now, it doesn't always work that way. Things might go wrong, but you know, so for 500 bucks, I mean, you can get started doing a lot of things. You could build a couple raised beds and plant a bunch of seeds for 500 bucks. You know, if you have 500 bucks, you could start a lot of projects on the homestead for 500 bucks that could quickly kind of pay for themselves at least when it comes to your investment, your initial investment, if you keep that small. If you don't go building a giant barn and buying you know, 100 acres, if you start small and keep it movable and lightweight, 
it's easier to make that money back. Now, how do you develop an actual budget for something bigger that you want to do? Let's say you want to start a camel dairy operation like we did. You probably don't. But maybe you want to get pigs and you want to do pastured pork. Or maybe you want to get dairy goats. And it's a bigger expense. And you're not sure how much expense is going to be you know, needed. My suggestion, because so many variables can come into play here, is just start with a guesstimate, but start small. Don't launch your goat dairy operation with 10 does. Instead, buy two and learn as you go. Pay close attention to the dollars and cents that you're spending, and then you'll know really good numbers how much the other eight are going to cost you. You won't be able to start a business right away with just your two. I look at my camel operation right now. We launched our camel dairy but we only have one camel cow who's in milk. I don't have a product to sell. My family's drinking all that milk. But I'm learning how much work, how much money, how much everything is needed for camels. So instead of buying five of them and going bankrupt because I made a bunch of mistakes, I'm learning on just the one cow and the one calf, and then I'll be able to grow in the future with a lot more knowledge and a lot more ability. So just have a guesstimate. Learn what the going rate for the animal is, Figure out your bare bones minimum infrastructure to get by and then do it for a season. Pay close attention to your numbers and that way the next year you will have the answer as to how much you need in the budget to grow your operation. Start small, grow slow. You grow your homestead just like the best producers of food in the world, fruit trees. You start small like a tiny little apple seed and you grow into this giant tree with all these amazing apples. This is a concept I talk about in our Start Homesteading Today course. That course is now free for you to take at thisishomesteady.com. Click the link right there. You'll sign up to our email list. I will ask you to fill out a survey it's just so I get to know who you are and what you want to learn. The survey will take you a few minutes to fill out. And then you get a free access to this entire course all about how to start homesteading today. We talk about everything you want to know, how to get started right now, how to find the right property for you, how to do your first garden, how to start your first livestock, and how to grow like that apple tree for years and years and years to produce more and more and more. Totally free course. Click there to join the email list and fill out that survey. And hopefully that course can help you, Mark, and your girlfriend get started on your homestead. And all of you who are listening or watching, hopefully that course can help you as well. If you would like to get a question answered on Ask Homesteady again, all you have to do, leave a question, hashtag Ask Homesteady in the comments section of our YouTube channel. That's where I look for these questions. And maybe yours will be the next question that we answer. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you in the next video slash podcast.